Let's use this video to delve a little deeper into the capabilities of the 9404 Sampler Extended Real-Time Oscilloscope. Uh, let me show you three things that you can do with this valuable and versatile little instrument. So I thought we'd take a, a look at a fast impulse measurement. Um, routed through to channel one, I have a narrow and rather small amplitude pulse. It's around about 90 millivolts, peak to peak. Um, if we look at the top of our screen, our trigger rate is about 200 kilohertz at the moment. Uh, so this is a fairly slow repetition rate pulse that we're looking at. And uh, at this particular time base setting, as we can see at the top of the screen, I'm, uh, I'm running at one tera sample per second. That's one picosecond sample interval. And I've got 250K samples writing to the screen at the moment. Um, so heavily oversampled noise uh, at, the, at the top of the screen on this, um, on this re relatively small signal. Okay, so let's um, take uh, a look a bit closer with uh, the zoom facility. We'll enable zoom one. And if we pull the, um, the box across here. So I'm setting a horizontal factor of, let's go a bit further, 50. Let's pull that back a bit to 100, 200 a zoom factor of times 200 uh, at the um, uh, at the 50% trigger position uh, let's get some measures on measure uh, statistics channel one let's have full time rise time amplitude uh, negative jitter peak to peak and RMS and let's also have negative width there we go and um, as we have added the measurements the thresholds that are being used in the measurement of, of, uh, are being displayed on the screen here and also the last measurement the width we can see where the width is the pulse width is being measured now in most of my experience, when I've come across uh, impulse measurements, the scientists that tend to make impulse measurements uh, generally use the 30% mesial to define pulse width. So in, in this case, uh, this would be in this inverted case, uh, the 70% mesial. So let's move that up to roughly 70%. And then within the measurements menu, the user definitions I can set uh, the uh, threshold exactly to 70%. So now my, my pulse width, negative width, it's currently measuring 197 picoseconds. Let's move this to a slightly faster time base. Now we're getting a uh, uh, and a negative uh, jitter peak to peak measurement and an RMS measurement there. Let's uh, sort out our zoom box. We don't need quite so much magnification on that now. And there we are, approaching three picoseconds RMS jitter. Of course, one of the many things you might want to do with your 9404 is uh, to look at data eyes. So um, what I've done here is I've connected the 9404 up to a pattern generator uh, and I'm using our Agile synthesizer, the AS108, to clock the pattern generator. Um, so let's see what Autoscale makes of uh, that batch of signals. And there we have them. Okay, so I've got uh, clock at the top. Um, the clock 
uh, is being uh, is set at 1.25 gigahertz at the moment uh, on the AS108. Uh, let's slow that time base down a little bit and we can see now on channel 1 if I trigger on channel 1 I've got my clock sinusoidal on channel 2 I've got my data stream on channel 3 I've got uh, my pattern trigger and if I um, slow the time base down a little bit further there we are we can see the repeating pattern it's a 2 to the 7 uh, pseudo random bit sequence and on channel 4 uh, I've got clock divided by 16 and we will speed this time base up and we can see that our data I is forming on channel 2 and really at this point we can lose interest in all of the other waveforms so let's turn off channel 1 let's turn off channel 3 channel 4 and let's put our display into single YT mode okay we are now ready to add our uh, an eye mask to this so as I say we're running at 1.25 gigabits per second I'm going to add an eye mask uh, we can see here we've got a number of masks available to us uh, I'm going to use an Ethernet mask and I'm going to select from the list uh, 1.25 gig mask and let's build it and then uh, let's align to it there we go uh, now we can begin testing this waveform against the mask straight away if I just um, uh, select its channel 2 and we test channel 2 against the mask and I don't know whether you can see this but there is a little tiny grazing of the mask there and you can just see one or two uh, red points appearing on polygon 1 and down here we have begun counting statistics here so we can see the total number of waveforms that have passed through here and the failed sample count on uh, the, the total failed sample count and uh, those failed samples on polygon 1 in fact I can just see there are a couple emerging here in this corner as well okay, so uh, let's do uh, let's uh, change the frequency to 2.5 gigahertz 2.5 gigabits per second now and uh, well that certainly caused quite a few failures against the mask let's change the mask to two times gigabit ethernet and uh, a realign there we go and um, we can run channel 2 against this mask and you can see here we've um, we're beginning to already we're beginning to get hits on uh, number three polygon three and again my count is rising here I can add a user margin to this mask so um, we can add a margin to uh, stress test any given uh, any given mask here we go and of course if, as I re-establish the test we are now heavily failing against uh, polygon 3 and we can see what margin we've got against the other masks and you can see I'm just beginning at 60% margin I'm just beginning to hit the uh, the let's go down a bit uh, just beginning to hit the other polygons there so I've got an infringement on two uh, and an infringement on one here with a 55% margin added now what else can we do we can add a set of measures uh, to this so to select none return to zero on channel 2 um, you can see I've picked up a large uh, number of standard measures that I can apply to the this I uh, I'm going to apply bitrate uh, jitter RMS and you can see as I add the measurements uh, the um, on the display we get an indication of where jitter RMS is being measured 
uh, let's add signal to noise ratio and again the indication as to where it's being measured uh, let's add one level and zero level and there we go so here we we have a 2.506 gigabit per second data rate we're looking at uh, jitter rms has been about 3.3 uh, picoseconds 3.2 picoseconds signal to noise ratio 25.46 db and the one level and the zero level are well slightly lower on the zero level at minus 137 and on uh, the upper level one we're on 133 millivolts so not quite symmetric there i can by using the uh, as 108 i'm uh, i can just put a little bit of a a frequency hop on here I'll just do that to force some force some jitter into the picture here and you can see can't you how the uh, the persisted variable persistence display is beginning to show us uh, the some systematic jitter on this eye so we can bring a little more clarity to uh, to the picture here if we choose to add a histogram uh, to channel two horizontal and here we can see we can see that's just beginning to to build there and what we're going to see um, build is a, a bimodal histogram at the two locations and you notice down here in the readouts box we've got a whole uh, collection here of statistics uh, around that histogram peak-to-peak uh, -peak readings medians means maxes um, mean plus or minus a number of standard deviations there so comprehensive information around our uh, our histograms we can also uh, improve our display to a degree we can use infinite color grading and now we will have um, color color contouring to the uh, number of hits there uh, in each position uh, of the eye so comprehensive analysis there for your data eyes so here I've switched to a signal from our new AS108 Agile synthesizer. I've got the RF output uh, connected to channel one. I've got a sweep trigger output uh, connected to uh, channel two of the 9404. Uh, the AS108 is generating a sequence of 16 QAM levels at 900 megahertz carrier. It's just a repeating pattern of the levels associated with QAM and then on the screen here I'm uh, I'm now displaying on channel 1 the, uh, the, the envelope of the carrier pattern uh, and on channel 2 there you go you can see the uh, uh, the trigger pulses at the beginning of each pattern cycle now this is a real-time envelope uh, of the pattern that I'm uh, that I'm displaying here the uh, the carrier highly aliased uh, of course if we um, if we histogram uh, this envelope and uh, draw the histogram box out here to cover the entire pattern of levels we can now turn on our markers uh, y markers and if we align those with the histogram peaks uh, we could e in turn we could measure each of the carrier levels associated with the um, with the pattern here if we now begin to speed up our time base um, we've now moved into ets acquisition uh, from our um, uh, previous uh, real-time acquisition so we're now using equivalent time sampling and I'm going to take this all the way up to 200 picoseconds per division one tera sample per second now 
uh, at this point we need to move over to trigger on the carrier and there we are we've moved from focus on the pattern to focus on the carrier so now we're seeing our modulated carrier and our um, histogram is re-established exactly as it was uh, for the pattern um, let's uh, bring on the uh, controls for the generator here and change the frequency to 2.4 gigahertz and then clear the, uh, the histogram so I've changed the carrier to another one that would be very familiar to us all I'm sure um, and um, as you can see our histogram levels have changed very slightly let's line those markers up again and then we can go all the way back down the time bases and go up to about to 200 microseconds per division change our trigger channel and our pattern will re-emerge so now there now is our envelope uh, at 2.4 gigahertz now this is the uh, sort of capability that we might use when testing envelope track power amplifiers for instance perhaps displaying a modulation envelope on channel 2 the envelope track on channel 3 and maybe supply current uh, on the uh, on the fourth channel